Steve Rhodes. Steve Rhodes, the author of Mastering Probability. Steve, you are there, right? I am. I hear you loud and clear. How are right. you today, Basil? I'm well, thank you. And uh, how are you? Good, good. So uh, the Boston Marathon uh, took place today, I believe, right? And yes. uh, I think the guy who won uh, averaged 13 miles an hour in running for, for 26 miles. It is, I mean, are you a runner? Are you a jogger? I know you're a big tennis player. Uh, I'm a sprinter. That was my thing when I was in high school. I was fortunate to have, have some records running as a senior under 16, and they they were held for about 10 years. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and they were actually under 16, and then because of that, it was also the under 18 and open. So although I ran under 16, they were faster than the under 18 and open. Of course, was, was that days. in South Africa or was that? That was in, in South, South Africa, yes. South yes. Africa. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Can you imagine running on average 13 miles an hour? For, I, for I two can't. Hours? I, for two and hours. I was looking, and I was looking uh, last night. There are sprinters today that are doing times. These, uh, it, it's just unbelievable what's going on in athletics. I love that. The fact that uh, people are so interested in, in uh, sprinting and long distance uh, you know, the times where it goes in and out of favor, but right now it's very exciting. Yeah, you know, Roger Bannister, he was the guy that first broke the four-minute mile. I uh, the, ran I ran in a meet when he was really? the guest. He was a guest at that at, at the I ran from my province as a as a as a high schooler. Um, cool he was the that? guest he was the guest for the club that day that I was I ran. So I uh. actually got to see him. I didn't meet him, but I got to see him, yeah. You know, he, he's he's the one guy. So you figure for for years, people tried to break the four minute mile. In fact, the day that he did it, and this is what I read. So I didn't, get, you know, I wasn't didn't talk to him personally or anything. But the day that he was going to run, that he actually broke the four minute mile, the wind was going the wrong way, and he was thinking of not running. <laughs> but he really, did it I did not know that. Yeah, and, but he he, wow. he he ran and and he, he broke the four minute mile, and then within a year. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but 10 or 15 or 20 guys, once they saw it, they knew that they could do it. Isn't that That's crazy? human nature. That's it's, human nature. That's the same. I remember the 10 second, uh, 100, and all of a sudden, it just started getting, ah. Uh, uh, people always aspire to the next level. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, what about the market? I think people don't want to hear about well, what I've done. They want to know, well, what are you talking about in the market? But, but Basil, that's the lead in because it's all about emotion. Right. It's Good. all about emotions. And so, you know, if I were to, to today's segment uh, is really kind of, you know, just to discuss the cycle of emotions, kind of take, for example, um, you know, and we've all experienced this or we've all seen this in the stock charts from going from euphoria uh, to actually raising the red flag, you know, and, and calling it right. quits. So in a, in a market like this, you were talking about the Middle East war, you know, it's been going on for thousands of years, although it's, uh, you know, a, a bit, uh, a bit more serious at this stage of the game, you know, how do you trade through those emotions? And for me, it's really about pattern recognition for you. Yes. It's about pattern recognition. So you right. share with us a set of tools that works for you that has created success. I do the same thing. And so for me, that boils down to really knowing about five or six different things. Where is support and resistance? To me, that's the very first thing when I'm taking a look Absolutely. at what a stock yes. chart is doing. And then it's about being able to identify, is there a top or a bottom pattern? For me, I like to use the TD9s, the Rhodes Mintum Indicator, buy and sell the D point, the A to B equals CD, and wave number seven, uh, brought to us by none other than you, Basil Chapman. So if we take a look at um, gold and silver, so what I wanted to share with folks right now, because this is about support and resistance, is that gold and silver are attempting to form new TAS market profiles. TAS market profiles, folks, they help me to identify objectively support and resistance. Now, I say they're attempting to form Basil because I use this little advanced tool that identifies them as they're forming. They don't always form. For example, the one in silver. So I took a snapshot of this chart uh, uh, just before we came on the air, maybe about 10 minutes, five minutes before we came on the air. And the profile that I have for silver has actually vanished. Doesn't mean that it won't uh, uh, come back and be there at 6.01 this evening. But let me share with folks, at least for the gold and silver, at least, but gold, I now have resistance at 2,400. And I've got support at 2,318.70. And we'll see in a few moments here why that's so important to understand. The silver resistance level was up at 2,885 and support was at 27, between 2,745 and 2,780. So that's shown on, on these charts here. And I'm just looking at the upper left-hand side, uh, gold and silver. 
and gold still has what I refer to as a sell the D point pattern. That would be negated if price were to close today above 2384.50. But the reason why these TAS market profiles are so important is they can help us, they can help traders, they can help investors understand when there's a change in trend for that time frame. So this happens to be a daily time frame chart for gold, and it shows that new potential profile that is attempting to form. And so if we just simply go back to um, January 17th, that's the lower left-hand side of my chart, that was when, when price closes below the bottom of profile, that says it's broken through support. And that generates a change in trend, a profile change in trend signal. We can see here as we follow gold from the 17th uh, till the end of January, price had spiked up and it spiked right up into the top of that profile. So it never cleared resistance. If you don't clear resistance, resistance is resistance. You're either going to consolidate or move lower. And that's, in fact, what gold did here. And what gold did was it formed a bottom. When it formed the bottom, it was a TD9 count bottom. And that was at the 2016-30 level, and that was back in the early part of uh, February. Then what happened, Basil, is we get a profile change in trend, where my cursor's at, this nice green bar that closes above the top of the profile. So that gave us a real signal. If you weren't familiar with what the bottom pattern was back here, the Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal, you certainly knew that gold had changed its trend. If you were short, you would say that's probably not the right position to be in, at least from a daily time frame. When price broke through that area, Basil went up and it formed this little TD9 count top. And that TD9 count top led to a sideways move. We never saw price close below the bottom of the profile, so it was just a top. And a top says to me uh, that price should go down and explore support. Can it hold support? In this case here, gold never got down to that level. And, and that TD9 count top uh, actually ended up failing, and it failed when price closed back above the top of that daily profile. About five, six days ago, we got a TD9 count top on the daily time frame. And that ended up being negated. Um, on, uh, on Friday, as a matter of fact. But there was also another top, and that's the sell the D-point pattern. That's a pattern that was taught to us by Larry Pesaventu, who learned it from H.M. Gartley, and it's a great tool and a great pattern. So that pattern is still out there. But if gold were to close above 2384.50, that pattern gets negated. It says all it would say, Basil, is I don't have a topping signal. We still might have... Uh, price trading with inside its profile, uh, 2400 again at the top, 2318.70 at the bottom. And I'll have tomorrow, if people turn in, tune in to the uh, Trader's Ed show at 11 o'clock, they'll know whether these profiles have taken hold or not. So it's all about emotion. It's about being able to identify tops and bottoms out there. Now, if we switch over and take a look at the daily NQ chart, the daily NQ chart, this is the first time that it's closing below the bottom of its profile, which is at 18,163. So what we know right now is we have a profile change in trend inside of the NQ. It also negated a TD9 count bottom, but here's an A to B equals CD pattern. So this says that price made the one-to-one -one level. That doesn't mean it's a buy. We wait for bullish reversal candles to confirm a bottom. If 17,861 doesn't hold, then we're going to be looking at 17,682 or thereabouts. So I see we're about to run out of time. Uh, so uh, um, uh, tune in tomorrow just to see where those gold and silver profiles are at. Thank you so much, Steve. That's a great oh, that's a great analysis, and we all appreciate it. And folks, Mastering Probability, check it out. Steve's terrific work. Thank you very much, Steve. Have a great rest of the day. Take care, Basil. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, folks, just as we're going to the break, the Dow is down 258, and we're looking at the S&P down 63. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis.